Hello and welcome to the big picture. The death of 23 children and more still struggling to save their lives following the midday meal tragedy in Bihar last week has once again brought back into sharp focus this massive program almost unmatched in the world. The fact that 11 crore children are provided free midday meals across the country every day is in itself a feat which has been sufficiently appreciated worldwide. While the tragedy is something one could not have ignored, what is also necessary at this time is also to focus on the success stories of this program in many states in the country. While Bihar was the last state to implement the 2001 Supreme Court order only in 2005, other states like Tamil Nadu, Rajasthan, Odisha, to name a few, have done extremely well according to many studies in implementing the program. Today we will look at how the states who have successful midday meal programs have managed to succeed. and what is it that other legard states like bihar can learn from them to discuss this i have with me reva nayar former secretary ministry of women and child Wel- child development in the government of india kiran bhatti senior fellow center for policy research indira yadav chairperson child welfare committee delhi and deepa sinha member of the right to food campaign welcome to all of you first let me uh, come to reva nayar uh, uh, reva ji the There are there have there are several states which have done very well in this program. Why do you think they have done well? well And I which th- are the states you would like to name? I want all of you to name these sta- states one of them. When, when it comes well, to. I think uh, the states of Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Andhra, and Kerala definitely have done very very well in this program. They have done well in the ICDS program also by supplying food to little children. Right. And they have done well in the midday meal program because they had a head start. At least in Tamil Nadu if you know the history of Kamraj and MGR it was during it, it, their time. It, it goes bea- bea- below, be- before Kamraj also. A little bit before but not wa- state wide. Yeah. What happened with MGR was that he provided food all days of the week to the children and when the officers came to him and said that no we will not give on saturday and sunday because the schools are closed right and he said why are they closed he said it's a holiday he said i ask you one question does hunger have a holiday and when they said they just looked stunned they couldn't answer that question so children will come and eat those who want to come will eat this is the attitude and this is the leadership at the political level which is what carries a program like the midday meal through it cannot be a written policy passed to the state and then you just sit on it and nobody supervises it and nobody takes ownership of it it has to be a leadership program and even today with miss madam jayalalita in tamil nadu i can tell you the program that takes up her complete attention is program of women and children that is one thing she doesn't like low off and you know she has got this 18 point program booklet which right. in my time was a green booklet it's a sacred booklet you know it's like the ramayana practically everybody has to know what's in it and those are the points for the health of women and children and those are the programs that carry it to the people from the chief minister's residence to the people and if chief minister holds the program in so much oh and she takes care of it so well it, 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 the others are others are frightened and it keeps going right kiran you think uh, which are the states apartment I tamil nadu is a celebrated yeah. case you know and we we have to keep talking about it right. but i would like to uh, take the example of himachal pradesh right. uh, somewhat lesser known as a success story perhaps because it's a small state tucked away in the himalayas but it has done actually exceptionally well on all education and and even health indicators and even the midday meal uh, functions very well there and i think there are two broad lessons that one can learn from the himachal experience it's a combination both of political uh, sort of will and commitment priority as uh, uh, reva ji mentioned but also of very uh, close sort of community engagement on or involvement in sort of monitoring and exactly. ensuring that the program on the ground is sort of runs in a manner that is beneficial to everybody so unless and i think it is a bit of you need both sides it's not just you know of course you need the political uh, priority is an in a sense an absolute necessity but along with the involvement of the people on the ground who are the eventual beneficiaries or the stakeholders uh, in that they need to be actively involved in this and they can play a very constructive role in monitoring and be able to give feedback of you know what's working what's not why the delays are taking place and in any case even as per the supreme court orders etc they're supposed to you know, 
know, mothers and other members exactly. of the community should be actively involved. And if they were, then, you know, even in this case of Chhapra, if there had been that sort of, uh, you know, uh, you know, watchful eye of the community, such an incident might not have happened. So when you bring community people into, uh, you know, sort of the, uh, uh, it gives them ownership and if they can uh, be involved in monitoring, then definitely I think implementation on the ground will improve. So I think Himachal is a very good case of that because there the communities have been very closely associated with the, uh, with the way the school functions actually as a whole and definitely in the way that the midday meal is operated on the ground. So there are big lessons to be learned okay. there. Okay. Indiraji? I have had the good chance of visiting. You, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are part of the Delhi school staying Yeah, with the, with I was part of it for MCD almost uh, 10 to 15 years. Right. Uh, from dry biscuit days yes. to how the cooked was started. Of course, everyone actually at that time invested so much time and energy to bring it to cooked food in Delhi. It was not easy. Schools were not ready and infrastructure about, I mean, everybody had kind of developed cold feet. So Supreme Court, we went with an affidavit that we can't do it. But it was forced. No, no, you have to do it. Bring a story where why you can do it. it. Say, why, why, why did um, you people say that every, we can't do it? Of every school in a city like in a city like yeah. Delhi, uh -huh. every school had the number of children. Sometimes there was nothing spare, neither by way of land nor by way of room. So that was the main thing. And both the shifts, the children come: morning girls right. and evening boys. And also, perhaps, honestly, half of us, the officers, were thinking that it will be an impediment in studies. So if it is possible to avoid to it, avoid it. That, that was also a reason. But then when Chief Secretary and the then Commissioner actually, actually thought ki we have to do it. You had no so, choice. We had no choice and I would give myself the credit of saying ki we can try it. So initially it was given to some NGOs. And out of then 20 or maybe 24, 10 are still working. Though it's a long story, it was 2002. Right. And uh, now it, is, it has changed and I can tell you Delhi is a case in example of m macro level management of cooking food of about 1 lakh child per day in one kitchen. One kitchen? One kitchen. How many kitchens are there? There are 9 to 10 because there are about 10 lakh children. That is municipal corporation only. Right. The same kitchens also go for directorate schools. Now it has and come to elementary education. That also. And uh, but I would also like to add that Delhi, the menu is unique. It's actually both taste and what the children like, also the nutrition. And that samples of the food go to Shriram Research Laboratory. It is mandatory. All this that okay. that has been put into it. So it's almost foolproof unless they change the menu because the lobby always tries because the menu is expensive, especially the puri sabzi. Children love it. And even now in Child Welfare lobby Committee. Lobby tries. Which lobby are you talking about? Uh, the food lobby. The people who are supplying. Because they would like an item where costs are less. And they can make more profits. Yes. Dal chawal. That, that is very common. Dalia khichdi. Which I got removed with a lot of resistance from almost everyone. And I have been hearing stories that they are trying again for Dalia khichdi. We are, we are hearing stories from Delhi. Complaints of the... Problems coming from Delhi. Yeah, because Dalia Khichdi, they will simply throw in the bin. The elder children do not like it at all. Nahi khate hain. Wo phir ghar se laate hai, yeah. achar ke okay. Deepa. Deepa, I want I want you to tell me which are the other states which are this thing and, and some of the problems which you have found in your during your studies and during your yeah. visits. Uh, actually, I agree with the states which have come earlier, the southern states and Himachal. But I would like to add that there are. I am told that there are some problems in Karnataka. In Karnataka, last few years there seems to be problem in uh, in, in implementation. Yeah, the first coming to the newer states, yes. there are a whole set of new states which are catching up with the southern states in the implementation of these schemes. Not just midday meal, but also PDS and Anganwadi, like Orissa, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh. Uh, definitely uh, the Rajasthan also to a certain extent and again it has been a comp combination of political will and priority at the state level at the highest level of leadership along with creating systems for community partnership right. and monitoring of the scheme. So for example Madhya Pradesh has something called the Sanja Chula scheme where a local women's group is given the common kitchen for the Anganwadi and the school Right. and they have built the infrastructure for that and they run it and the whole SAG. The government is builds it. Yeah the government builds it. Government builds the infrastructure and gives it to an SAG who runs the Sanja Chula 
for the Anganwadi and the school and its local women. It's run by an SSG and community participates in it. And there have been case studies by planning commission also saying that it is working very well. Similarly, Odisha is another scheme, where, uh, another state where these schemes are now functioning well, where communities have been given greater control. So one is community monitoring, second is priority. And third, also which the southern states have done and these states, why the scheme works is adding quality to the scheme. So making the food that is given in the school of a decent quality, which makes it very popular. And so parents and children are more interested in making it work. Tamil Nadu is giving eggs every day. Tamil Nadu is giving eggs every day now. Rajasthan is giving a fruit a week. Right. Madhya Pradesh also tried to give eggs, but there was a vegetarianism backlash there. But Orissa is giving eggs twice a week. So they are adding quality to the food, which is enhancing the community participation as well. Chhattisgarh at one stage was giving papad and achar also in the, in the midday meal. So that also contributes to it. The problem in some states is, uh, ma'am was talking about centralized kitchens right. in Delhi. So uh, Delhi, of course, is a unique situation where space is a very big problem and it's, uh, urban areas have different issues. <coughs> but otherwise, we have found that it is better to have decentralized kitchens, one, because of this whole issue of community participation right. and food is fresh. So e and in rural areas, this, this, this is a more practical solution than centralized Exactly. Care. In it's Delhi, Supreme Court order that it should be. So in rural, mm -hmm. and we are doing it, 12 lakh schools feed children every day, of which very few are through centralized kitchens. It's mostly through decentralized. And where there are centralized kitchens, there have been issues with certain food items, like say rotis, which are, they start making it in the night. So the last school gets it really late and it is not something. And by the time it's very eat, cold. By the time it's cold. So there are certain niche. The other is who runs these centralized kitchens. Exactly. One is there are lobbies. The other is when it's religious institutions, they try to influence the menu, which was one of the problems in Karnataka, where the government decided to give eggs, but Akshay Patra, Akshay Patra which Patra is the Patra group which provides the menu, said that they refused to make eggs because they first give the food to God as prasad. So then that got accepted and they had to stop giving eggs and replaced it with banana. So who gets these centralized contracts also becomes an issue when it is... Uh, okay, not. that is interesting. Raven, I, you know, one thing I want you to, uh, accountability, when we talk of accountability and when, uh, who, what kind of ac accountability can you have at the lowest level? Only the com community participation can only uh, ensure that accountability? No, I think apart from the community and in a sense the parliament, uh, uh, Panchati Raj institutions involve communities also because that's, it's at the panchayat level. And these are elected members and they are mothers also and they are part of self-help groups also. So I think Panchayati Raj institutions that came into their own in Karnataka, Tamil Nadu and the South are also responsible, responsible. for having lent this beauty to the program that they have got involved. Secondly, you would notice in these states the level of literacy is very high. Local literacy for mothers for all children, for the entire community, everybody reads and therefore everybody is conscious about the linkages between health, mortality and food. So they come to know what are the good foods, what are the good nutritional habits. Therefore malnutrition is less in the south, much, much less in the areas where the midday meals has been given and where the Anganwadis have been situated with additional points, you know. The state governments are also contributing extra money right. over and above what funds come from the state so in the centrally sponsored scheme. They put in their own money to pay the Anganwadi workers, to pay the person who cooks the food in the school. And when that is done and the kitchens are furnished properly by the state government, that gives not only visibility to the program, but also gives kind of ownership to the community. Absolutely. In fact, uh, we, we, we need to look into those issues where there's several other issues it needs to be linked into. But before that, we need to go into a very short break. Please keep watching and come back very soon. Welcome back. We are discussing the midday meal program and looking at the success stories and why have they become successful. Kiran, uh, coming to you. <coughs> One of the things is about involvement of NGOs. As uh, Deepa was pointing out, there are possibilities and we have seen reports and people have been warning also of the creation of vested interest. How far is that a problem? And yeah. how have mm -hmm. these successful states managed to overcome those kind of vested interests? 
Well, basically, the successful states have done it on their own. They haven't relied on NGOs or other private uh, uh, interests, in a sense, to uh, you know to to supply the food or manage uh, you know the program. And I think that is a definitely a big uh, sort of lesson that we can sort of draw from the success stories. Uh, and also, there were no in Bihar. If I if I if I if I'm right, there were no, uh, no NGOs involved. In Bihar, in there are no NGOs involved. Oh, yes. That is true. Uh, but the, I just want to comment on the accountability issue because I think that is also linked here because again accountability to fix accountability uh, when you have other parties becomes a much more complicated issue as well. Right. But one of the big big issues I think in uh, practically all public service delivery and which includes midday meal is the fact that there are no fixed accountabilities. So even the Chapra case has shown yes. you know everybody is asking you know who's to blame, who's, who's responsible? responsible, who's responsible and there are no Ultimate, answers. Uh, ultimately it will all it may all boil down to that principle oh, and oh, that husband. Or yeah, unfortunately, and then everything is closed. That's right. Unfortunately, it gets pinned onto the on the lowest rung, yes, yes. and who, in fact, uh, uh, often function under a lot of constraints. I mean, the cooks regularly don't get paid on time. Even in this case, there was no storage, and the cook had to literally every day collect the supplies, and you know, often pay out of their own pockets to make sure that there is regular supply of midday meals. But when it comes to actually apportioning the blame, then they are the ones with you know the, with the least voice who often get. And the reason is that actually the system hasn't fixed any accountability. So. So, and it's across the board. It's not just for the midday de delivery of midday meal. If you look at education issues, all of them in the school, one doesn't know who to turn to when there is a problem because it's not decided that such and such, you know, that the block officer or the district officer or the education minister himself, who is responsible at, at various levels. I think that uh, the whole department needs to do a kind of a comprehensive exercise in trying to, you know, listing what are the responsibilities and against them who is responsible to make sure that those things are provided so that when there is a problem, you know who to turn to. And you can also then, you know, think about what are the next steps. I mean, is there going to be a penalty or not? Or how do you make sure that this doesn't happen again? Rather than it being a kind of a circus of trying to, you know, figure out who, exactly. who to fix the blame only, on. Only so, when there is a big pro major problem. That's like right. That. Indraji, how, what, what, what is the kind of system which Delhi has evolved? And is it working? Is it functioning uh, sufficiently? Five, six years, I have not, no close interaction. And, uh, but I keep talking to children who come to us now in Child Welfare Committee. Kya mila tha? So the menu continues and the children love the food because uh, it's good. And um, I hope the authorities keep sticking to it. I heard that there was some protein. One of the things which I, which I was reading was that in Delhi, one of the problems is that the centralized kitchens, whenever there is a problem, nobody knows whom to approach. No, 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 no. They are, there are defined officers, supervisory staff who is supposed to visit every fortnight. There are designated officers, midday meal officers. Are they <laughs> held accountable for anything which, ha which happens? Certainly. And the mechanism actually is now in place. So if we want to avoid, we can. Otherwise, system is there. System is there. It's almost, you know, foolproof. But uh, Delhi being Delhi, you know, it can happen here. Transport ki suvida hai. There is a kind of closed circuit of schools. So you can What about it. the western interests which have developed? You, you earlier you spoke about a lobby. I, I tell you, all these people, when initially 24 came, how the others were eliminated? They tried their best to prove the other food wrong. We found false lizards. Lizards, we, yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, today we have we have we have today yeah. we have a story about lizards yeah. and uh, things like that. It it it, it actually is, is how it has succeeded in Haryana. We have yeah. there is a story saying that you know lizard, actually somebody found it luckily before anybody ate it. Yeah, yeah. and seven eight instances wherein once I remember the chief secretary Mrs. Shelja Chandra ringing me up. How these children have landed in hospital? What kind of food was served? Why we have not? I said, ma'am. Let me go because one other uh, person, they are all now profit making people. They were initially, they posed as NGOs. They are of course now like anybody. So um, I said, let me go. And I really found the basic issue was that how this person can be disqualified and the other person can get those areas. So it is, it keeps on continuing. So then but, it, the but huge political influence also works. In the maybe, world. maybe everybody's influence and officers also can control it and but but i would like to take take one or two instances of other than delhi i happened to visit eight places yes. eight states micro level i had gone to see some pota cabins but they happened to be that that school was cooking midday meal micro level beautiful example where they were making something which i didn't understand what is it they said this is muthia i said what is muthia he said you know where was this you, this was gujarat 
somewhere near Amdavad. Gujarat, there is, is another success story. I'm. Yeah, micro level kitchens and the, this um, uh, ghee. It was being put in the atta with namak mirch and many things. And muthiya means you put a mutti and put it in the oil, and it comes out. And this, I saw the children loving it, loving with a simple chutney. And they said that this protein, protein which should be there, and this uh, calories which should be there are ensured. Simply, uh, I mean, I don't want to become brand ambassador for anyone, but in ha Ahmed, uh, sorry, Hyderabad, Andhra, uh, the biggest kitchen, which is not even in Delhi of yes. that scale, is run by Nandi, yes. Nandi Foundation. Yes. They are now in uh, him, uh, Odisha, Rajasthan, and one more state. So these these are the people who have initially started on no profit, no loss, Nandi Foundation pitching in. How long they will survive the competition? I have no idea. Is that but they were success stories. Okay, Revalaya, you think that th this there are mixed, uh, you know, uh, messages, mixed information about the, these NGOs and uh, others working in this in this field. You see, it depends on their sincerity. NGOs can be sincere. NGOs can be insincere yes. also. Just money making rackets also. So it is for the government or the agency at the state level to be very discerning while making selections. In, in, in Tamil Nadu, there are no NGOs involved. There are some NGOs involved, but I suppose they would be just as a helping hand. How does, or it how, would be in fact, how does the, I, I want Kiran, uh, how does the Tamil Nadu system work? You know, when it comes to cooks, helpers, they have a good administrative structure. They yeah? do. That very, is the point. Good. They've made a, almost very a separate good. structure just for the midday meals, right from the school or onto the top. And it's very regularly monitored. In fact, it gets monitored at the top level by the chief, chief minister on a regular yes. basis. Yes. So that is, they have a separate person at the school level who's yeah. responsible to make sure that the, you know, supplies come. That why the, is this, know, why has not, this not been know, possible they, in other states? No, I will just tell you one thing. They have not been discouraged by the very large tragedy they had five years ago. Yes. You remember when the entire kitchen and the entire school burned. Right, and right. all the children who were coming out of the school so, couldn't leave the school. They got burned. Right. It was a terrible tragedy. Yes. But the lessons they have learned from that tragedy is to take care while setting up kitchens not near to the school buildings and not thatched roofs. That's I, one thing they have learned. Yeah. That was a terrible tragedy that yeah, happened. Yes. There Tamil is a Nadu. long history of food being a political issue in Tamil Nadu. In Tamil Nadu. Back and, to the know, yeah, it, kilo but, rice but one of the things in Tamil Nadu is whichever the government keeps changing but the program doesn't get affected. No, yeah. This program yes. doesn't that, change. That is, that is the most important thing. Yeah. Yes, Deepa. Deepa, I want you to tell me this, what uh, Indraji was talking about and things like that. Where are these states where, in, in states where there are these kind of uh, success stories, what is it that one or two things which have, which really have, have made them a success? See, we've talked about it, the, having the infrastructure. No, but this, this self-help groups and things like that, as I was asking her, this, it, it has worked in some places, it has not worked in some places. Why? Is it because the, the way these groups are chosen, there is something, there is a, they, they have just, come under pressure, the political pressure has brought them, what is it? That see, it's a combination of factors. One is who is cooking, second is who, the, how are they chosen. And then how much political priority there is to that program. If you want it to work, then you make sure that the ch choice is made in the right way. And what is the monetary? Right. Bihar also has midday meal officers at the block level and the district level. But they had no clue what their role is. They didn't have the transport okay. money to go and visit these schools. So a block level midday meal officer in Bihar who's supposed to visit 30 schools a month was barely visiting one or two and monitoring over the phone. So there are structures in other states also which are not functioning. So it's not just having, I mean, copying the structure the way it is, but... So, the, yeah, that, I mean, that is the important, that, you know, you can't have a same structure for all, for the entire country. Every state has to create its own structures. Is, is that the way it should be? And also put their and money where their mouth well, is, in yeah. a sense. And you know, also, they have you to see provide the it with all most the most populated states where the children are, are Uttar Pradesh and Uttar Bihar. Pradesh and Bihar. Now, it is very important, even for Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh and Bihar, this part of central India, to give more leadership to this program, we are soon becoming the malnutrition capital of the world. Exactly. India is going to become concentrated despite with having children. This, despite having a, such a massive program yes, like this. Yes. So these three or four states that account for a large number of children have to be very, very smart and put their act together because that can account for the total improvement on the Malish. profile of India and infant mortality coming down. Children going to school, healthier children, able to attend to school, Absolutely. brain development yes, is better. I want to say something, two things. Quickly. Southern states have this, that in the sambar or in the, uh, you know, dal, they put vegetables. Mm. And the quantity of rice and dal, etc. that they give, 
actually meets the nutrition level Nutri as well as the hunger level. In fact, in not fact, there was there was a case. Like in fact, there was a case in Karnataka. I come from Karnataka. Some years back, that ten years back almost, that there was a complaint in uh, in from one of the places, and when Chief Minister rushed his officer, they found out actually the problem. The stomach ache which children had was because of overeating of the oh. daily. Kanaka so, okay. also, Kanaka also, <laughs> Akshay Patra gives as much as a child wants, which other places I do not know. But, uh, and uh, I doubt anywhere else it is like that. One more thing regarding Quickly. this Anganwadi. Uh, I have heard that grains are not given for Anganwadi. In Delhi also we were not getting. So what we were doing it, we were kind of doing some poaching from the primary section to give it to nursery. Because nursery was not recognized. Okay. Similarly, I think Anganwadi, the grain, the rice and uh, wheat is not given by the central government. It should be included. Okay. The, I state, think the state government is supposed to buy it. Buy. Okay. Uh, okay. On that note, we are doing completely run out of time. But it, it's evident from this discussion that despite the fact that you know, there, ha there are some terrible uh, incidents which have happened in the midday meal scheme, there are states which are doing well. But as we discussed, even in those states, there a constant monitoring needs to be done to make this program a success all the time. Thanks to all my guests, uh, Indira Yadav, Kiran Bharti, Reva Nair and Deepa. Th please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue on the big picture same time tomorrow.